So now I can talk a little bit about how to practice intonation in general. I find that many students tend to adjust their intonation and then immediately move on. <laughs> so what happens is, for example, say, say we're trying to tune this double stop passage. Now, the way I would approach tuning these double stops is first to identify open strings that we can check individual notes in these double stops. So, for example, this A, that's in the C, C natural A. We can check with the open A. After you get the A, then you fit the C natural to the A. And you'll notice that when you're playing double stops, you will have to temper your tuning a little bit to be a little bit more just, justified. So for example, in this example, the C, you might wanna bring up a little bit higher than you would normally if you were just playing. So that it blends with the A better. So the first step is to find all of the notes that you can tune with open strings. So for example, even the next one, that B you can tune with an open E. And then tune the G. Okay, now I said before that a lot of students adjust to the note, they find the note and then they immediately go fast and keep <laughs> And I, I always say, slow down and listen to the note that you just adjusted because the only way that you're going to improve your intonation is to actually memorize and remember where that pitch was after you adjusted it. Once you know that it's exactly where it's supposed to be, your job is to repeat it over and over so that every time you get to that note, it's exactly in tune. And what are the different ways that we need to remember a pitch? So for example, First of all, this is a perfect fourth. The intervals that will be perfect intervals that you can check and know that they're gonna be dead on are unisons, octaves, perfect fourths, and perfect fifths. This is a perfect fourth in this case. Which is actually a little bit hard to develop your ear for. I find octaves, obviously unisons and fifths a bit easier. Um, but anyway, when you listen for whether something is t in tune, how can you tell whether it's actually in tune or not? You will notice that the pitches start to blend into each other. So you won't hear as much two notes but more one note. And the sound, the tone color that you'll hear becomes more neutral rather than pungent. <laughs> so 
uh, for example, if I'm gonna be finding a perfect fourth here. The way that I find this is I, I go a little bit under, I go a little bit over the note. until the notes really blend together and it's more of a transparent sound. You'll also notice that there's a bit more volume right where it's exactly in tune. Okay, now that I know this B is in tune, My first step is to try to listen to it really carefully with a nice mezzo forte dynamic. And I try to remember three things. I try to remember what the pitch sounded like. So using my ears. I listen for the tone color. And then the other things are more physical. I remember physically where my finger is positioned and it's always important to balance your finger. So you don't want to adjust your intonation where it's only in tune when you go like this or you go like that because you're not going to repeat it like that. You always have to make sure that your finger is balanced. Once I listen to the pitch really carefully, I try to remember physical markers, such as how close my finger is to the pegs, where my thumb is, and then also visually. It's really important to actually look at your fingers while you're playing, because many of us are visual learners. And even if it's subconscious, having the visual support there will really help you to remember even if you don't have to focus or work on it that much. Okay, so that was a little bit of a segment on intonation.